Hi, I'm Isabella and I've just finished an art foundation course and I'm here today to speak to Jefferson Hack about Dazed and Confused. My name is Jefferson Hack and I'm the editorial director of the Dazed Group, which means I... Well, I founded a magazine called Dazed and Confused 19 years ago. Coming up to 20 soon. And, um, yeah, I look after that and a couple of other magazines called Another and Another Man. What prompted you to create the magazine and actually go about doing it? I met this uh, really inspirational guy called Rankin, who was a photography student. And um, we uh, started working on the student newspaper together. And it was... It was really originally named Untitled Magazine. It was the magazine for all the art colleges in, that were grouped together. At that time it was called the London Institute, but it was St Martins, Camberwell, Chelsea, um, and the London College of Printing and London College of Fashion. Mm. You know, it won, it won the Guardian Media Awards um, that year um, for Best Photography, Best Magazine, Best uh, Design. The magazine itself kind of swept the board and it meant that we got a lot of confidence from that. We started days, but it was really, um, you couldn't really call it a magazine. It started as a poster, um, uh, a poster fanzine, really, black and white poster that folded down to an A4 cover. Three sheets of paper, about that big, um, that folded to an A4 cover, like kind of the size of a broadsheet yeah. newspaper would be, but a bit thicker. And the idea was each side was a poster, and on the reverse would be articles. And it was a cheap way, or affordable way, for us to print something and get it out, and that was the first first issue was was done like that. What have been sort of particular highlights of the magazine, sort of certain covers or certain interviews that you've had that have sort of stood out over the years? Well, okay, so I mean, we've had a lot of fun, obviously, um, interviewing and photographing a lot of music and film and fashion icons. Um, so you know, me personally, I've interviewed people like. Bjork and Bono and Patti Smith and um, Madonna, for instance, which was kind of amazing to, to, to be able to do that exclusively for the magazine. Dazed is a magazine where we didn't just want to write about culture, but we wanted to be actively involved in making and facilitating the creation of new ideas. So we would work with lots of artists and photographers and fashion designers and musicians to kind of network each other's skills to take their work into new places. So someone like um, Sam Taylor Wood doing photography in the pages of the magazine, Jake and Dinos Clap Chapman collaborating with, um, you know, people like um, uh, Alexander McQueen. Um, those kind of ideas were really, seem quite obvious now because collaboration um, is a trend, if you like. Um, but in those days, it was completely, it was much more experimental. One of the big collaborations we did like that was with Alexander McQueen and Nick Knight. We worked with um, different disabled communities to um, put together a fashion story that dealt with disabilities. It was called Fashion Able. And um, different designers made um, a piece for each person's disability. So Philip Treacy, for instance, made an amazing hat of butterflies for um, a girl that was blind and uh, Alexander McQueen made um, a piece for this incredible uh, sprinter who was called Amy Mullins, who was the cover of that issue. And um, we, uh, we, 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 did, we worked for six months on putting on doing the casting and getting uh, the different individuals involved to trust us and um, to work with the designers to make the special pieces for them. And um, did the shooting over three or four days. Um, so it was a big project, but when we put it into the magazine, we didn't really expect the reaction that we were going to get, um, which was incredibly positive, but way beyond what we imagined. And, uh, you know, the, the cover and some of the inside stories were reproduced in national newspapers across, you know, from the Telegraph to the Times to um, others. It was debated on national TV. We got, you know, American, European press coverage on it. And I realized very quickly that you know, I didn't want to be a high circulation magazine, but I wanted to be, you know, I, I realized that you could be very influential by, you know, having a foot and being still part of the avant-garde and still part of the underground, but being able to influence the mainstream by being original and, um, 
and um, doing things which were surprising. And, um, you know, that issue really proved that to me. And it's been part of the kind of language of dating and views ever since. I mean, what's the sort of current project that's particularly uh, Yeah, exciting? we just put a cover to bed with um, AYY on the cover, um, mm -hmm. who's a Chinese um, artist who famously um, showed at the Tate uh, Modern and Turbine Hall um, last year, and he was recently arrested two weeks ago um, by the Chinese authorities when he was trying to leave um, Beijing, where he lives and works, to go to Hong Kong for a meeting, and um, he got arrested taken to prison and he has been there for two weeks. He's not had access to a lawyer, he's not had access to his family. He's been an outspoken critic of the, uh, you know, the, the lack of freedom, the lack of freedom of expression in China. So he's been a critic of the Chinese government. We have done a story on global activism, uh, an issue on global activism, and he's the cover story. Um, and obviously we hope very much that he gets released. That's the current project. Um, with with sort of the change of um, situation with iRobot, um, did you have to change the article and sort of where it was placed within the magazine or sort of how? Yeah, how massively. It sort of affected? I mean, we were um, in email discussion with him. I was in email discussion with him um, up until two days before he was arrested, and we were about to set up an interview with him. Um, you know, and then obviously he disappeared. Um, so it massively changed the story. Um, and now, you know, the story is really one about uh, putting as much pressure uh, on the international community to campaign against the Chinese authorities to get him released. What advice would you give someone who um, wishes to pursue a career in writing or publishing? Read, read as many, uh, read as much media, consume as much media as you can, because from other people's interviews um, and from you know understanding the media, you'll be able to formulate your voice and what you're going to add to that. To look around and see, you know, what local media, um, accessible places where you can get stories published, and very quickly that. The, that's that's the inroad to training and the rhythm that that, that will happen. All all right for online blogs or, or online magazines. For publishing, I would say um, go and talk to as many other publishers as you can if you want to publish. Um, which means that if you're starting a fanzine or you're starting a magazine or you're starting an online venture, go and talk to other people who've done similar things that you want to do and form you know, uh, uh, an understanding of what they were up against and try and learn from that. Um, again, you know, if you just create in a vacuum, you will make more mistakes. <laughs>